it's so lovely to see you. Uh, our guest today is Jenny Hoglund, as you know, and I'm going to give her the word right away. All right. So, Jenny, um, thank you for coming to talk to us today. As you said, so, so many people want to know uh, what you have to say about our today's topic, and our today's topic is the needs of an adolescent and how we can best address it at these times. Thank you, Mirka, and um, hello, everyone. I, <laughs> you know, I'm glad, Mirka, you said this is a conversation. I, I um, am not really comfortable speaking to a screen, but it's really good to see so many familiar faces. And I also, and, but then it makes me wonder why I need to address you, because as far as I know, you know at least as much as I do. So anyway, uh, I've been asked to talk about the needs of the adolescents. And I know that we all have very different situations and we come from different environments and, and so forth. And therefore, I think that calls also for different solutions. So, you know, it's not that I can present or, or a, a recipe that this is what we all need to do with our adolescents in these times of uncertainty. And also, you know, I'm in, in a different position because schools are still open in Sweden and we really don't do remote education. We do have some experience of that because we have a student, we have Deborah who's joined our meeting here. Her daughter, Emma, is in Vienna and she has participated via Zoom when we have done presentations. Um, and she gave her presentation of her work and study online, which was really nice. So, but that's a very limited experience I have. But I thought that what I can do um, uh, is maybe to talk a bit about, um, you know, about the adolescence because, and reflect about the core knowledge that needs to be there in our understanding about adolescent and adolescent work because that's what we need to know about the third plane. And, and reflecting upon the needs of the adolescents that maybe can then help us to give a clue what we really need to do, how and when we can uh, support them. So what I'm going to say is probably very familiar to all of you, um, but you know, it's always good to revisit uh, one's thinking. What we know is that the adolescent is, and when it's entering the third plane of development is actually, it's a completely different stage because it's he or she is now leaving childhood and entering adulthood. It is the birth of a new social being. It's the birth of man, you know, so it's completely different. So, so we have to think about childhood where children have there is a task of the child. And then with adolescence, we have the task of the adult because we have to prepare them for adulthood. So there are these changes in body. And what is, I think, interesting to think about is that, you know, Montessori writes that with a young child, it's the first year of a child's life. There are some, you know, these miraculous changes physically. Uh, but for an adolescent, the changes takes over six years, more or less. The whole period of adolescence is about changes. It doesn't happen as fast. The physical changes doesn't ha don't happen as fast as for a young child. So, and because of these very intensive changes, the energy and the emotions of the adolescents are so focused on these changes. And therefore, Montessori says there is little time left for uh, um, interest in academics. Or not interest, I shouldn't say that, but to sit down and study. That is not what they need, especially, and this is especially true for the younger adolescent. The older adolescent is different, but the younger adolescents really need this constructive work, just as the child constructed him or herself as an individual, now the adolescents need that work that will help him uh, become an adult. There are these physical changes. 
And then there are also other changes because I mentioned emotions. And this is a time when they are extremely sensitive. We know this, there is a change of the psyche and they are, can be confused. They can act without reason. And, you know, they, they really are grappling with whom they are and what they are good, good at and how they are good and all of these questions. Um, and then, of course, we do think that they intellectually, they seem weaker, Montessori says, because of these physical changes taking place. It's not that they are not intelligent anymore, they are, but they need to use their intellect in a way that will inform them about the future that they are going to be part of. But they have to practice what has been accomplished earlier and learned earlier. The elementary is important, really very crucial for the adolescent because that's where they do a lot of the a lot of the intellectual work that they later have to rely on as uh, adolescents. They want also to free themselves for the fa from the family. They must, they must participate in the workings of society and that is their developmental task, you know. And I've been thinking a lot about this because, you know, when we, when we talk about adolescence, we have to talk about adolescence and think about adolescence in the entire context of human development because each plane of development, as we know, has its own pla plane of education and it has its own developmental task. And so we really need to think about what is the developmental task of the adolescent just as we need to think about what is the developmental task of the first plane child or the second plane child. And once we, we understand the plane of development and the developmental task, then we will also understand what work is developmentally right for, for uh, the adolescent or for the individual. And then we know that Montessori makes a distinction between development and education. And it's ed development we know is um, the process of becoming and it's there by nature. And education, which then is super nature, is there to give, to provide the opportunity to have to be able, to have the opportunity to develop as nature intended. So then we have to think about finality, which is nature, and then causality, and that is the supernature, what we offer. So then when we think about the developmental task of, of the adolescent is to, and then Montessori is very clear, she says it is to do adult work and practice or and participate in the workings of society. And then we know that every plane of development requires its own prepared environment. And the prepared environment is the support system that will allow development to happen. And when we look at human development and when we look at all the planes of development, we know for me, it has been very helpful to think about what is it that is constant across the planes of development and what is it that is different because that really informs us about the plane of development where we, where we uh, are. And then we know, that, we know that she always speaks about work and it has to be the right kind of work for a plane of development. We know there has to be a prepared environment and the prepared environment is the physical environment and is also the social environment, right? And that will differ uh, to support development. And then she also speak about independence. 
so there which is true for all planes of development but the independence that the child is striving towards varies depending on plane of education and and development so therefore we we um you know we have to think about as i said about the, the third plane now so our task then is to prepare an environment for them that will support their development. The development of doing adult work, becoming an adult and participate in the workings of society. And, and so then the question is, what kind of development then could this be? And then I have this, which I think is a lovely quote. My plan, therefore, in a few words, is that secondary education should be given in residential schools. These would be, to a certain extent, self-supporting and would combine, and listen to this, then advantages of the sanatorium, the polytechnic, university, and religious community. So those are the aspects of a prepared environment that Montessori uh, describes. And you can read about this in um, the reform of secondary education. It was a talk she gave in London in 1939. So the physical environment for the adolescent is just as crucial as the physical environment is for the first plane child. And it's really difficult, I think, to replicate in a home environment, actually. And that causes us a bit of a um, bother, maybe, when we can't offer that kind of environment to the adolescent. So they need the right kind of work in the right kind environment. Another aspect that we have to consider with the adolescents who are to do adult work is that it has to be real work. It has to be an ongoing reality. It's not that it, you know, with the elementary children, yes, they have a responsibility too, but they don't have to face the consequences of their decisions or of their work as the adolescents actually will do. Because the adolescents will have to face the consequences of their decisions and the work they have done. And there is no parent, no adult to pick up after them. There are always adults there to support them, to work side by side with them, but there is a difference now. They have to, to sort of face the music um, about their, their work and their circumstances. They have to have a social context. It's not enough to have a prepared environment where they actually can do adult work. They also need to have a social context. They have to be part of a social, uh, a social organization. They have to be part of a community to which they make a contribution. And they have to come to grips with how to, to the scaffolding that is needed to sustain their community. They have to live the lives of their community. And they have to do the work of the community. And, it's, and that's why it's work, practical work, and it's also study. And they have to do both. They have to do both, and that's really important. And that's how Montessori says that's how they will reach maturity. So we, we have to give them these social experiences that will help them reach what Montessori mentions as social independence, which is one of the independences that the third plane adolescent is striving for social independence and then it's also economic independence so there has to be some production and exchange going on 
that they it's not just you know doing a pizza sale every friday it's not about just or uh, you know uh, do a bake sale or <laughs> you know making key rings and sell because elementary children do that and love doing that it's about understanding that they they are they have an economy they are part of an economy that will sustain them their and their daily living and that they need an experience of it's not the same as just you know being given a monthly allowance by your parents but you actually have to work to get some money that you then can have the the opportunity uh, to decide how are we going to use this? How much will go to food? Shall we spend money on whatever that they need for their community? And then also have the experience that maybe they don't have all the money they need. So how do you solve that? And how do you address that? So, so and it's this social organization that very much in a way also provides them with a schedule that what needs to take care, what needs to happen every day because they have to take care of their environment, themselves, and also um, others. And they have to be responsible for that. Um, which means that they really had to organize a lot of things. So therefore, the work in their environment and their social organization provides them with a schedule. And this is really very different from being part of a family where the family has a schedule to suit an organization that will Usually it's, you know, it's something that will serve adults, right? And, and uh, adult schedules, but it's, it's for that family. But now you have to come together with your, your uh, peers who can have other ideas, who have other experiences, other circumstances. And now you have to come together, live together and work together and see how you can organize it so it's good for everyone with respect for everyone society then to experience that has very much to do with association and discipline um, which is very good qualities for adolescents to acquire but also to adaptation which is another quality that Montessori speaks about. So we really need to think about what, how, how, what are the essential elements? What are the essential aspects? What is the core knowledge here about adolescence? And how will that inform us? How can we translate those experiences into an experience that many adolescents perhaps have today when they have to stay at home and they are the objects of remote education. I have, I have a daughter and she's at university and of course she's doing everything online these days because they can't go to the university and visit and see their professors. But you know, a lot of what is happening online seems to be assignments and checking of assignments. And, and that is not, I think, what is meant for adolescents at all. Well, I, personally, I think that what we want to, we want to, for all our students, no matter what age, we want to present them with the reality and not a virtual reality. But then we have to come up with other work than just giving assignments online, but work that will be adult work, that will help them to, to experience social organization, that helps them to, so they can organize themselves, that has to do with discipline, 
And you know, <laughs> I, I, I've, I've read a book by Admiral William McRaven. He gave a commencement speech for a, a graduating class from University of Texas at Austin. This is for Bill and Jesse and uh, Veronique in Austin. And, and, and he, he says that if you want to save the world, you maybe you should start by your day with by making your bed. Because if you make your bed, that is one task completed. He continues to talk about how it, important it is to, to get into a routine and to accomplish one task because it can give you the lift you need to start your day. And it gives sort of satisfaction, satisfaction right today that you have accomplished something. And that's a nice feeling. And then he says, then you can go on to accomplish other things too. And then of course he had a lot of other advice as well in this book. But, but I think these are the things we have that has to do with self-discipline, that have to do with organization and, and um, how can we help and support our adolescents to do these real, uh, real tasks, real work and not just assignments because I think that is improve really important not you know how to to help them feel that they are a contributing member of their family of their household and then i think for the older adolescents who really start to to enjoy actually studying in a way and they don't mind academics and uh, so much and they really want because that's when the, the you know the metacognition sets in and they know themselves in a different way and they are interested in in because in, in um, the future in a different way because they understand that they will soon be at us and 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 they want to approach that and think about that and they you know if you have an older adolescent i think they can direct themselves and organize themselves to study without actually having assignments. But I think for the younger adolescents, I'm, this is my personal view, I don't think assignment is what they need. I think they can do work and they can do research if they would like to and if they find something interesting. But I think we should furnish them with, with some other things or, or options or opportunities to do. It's a tricky thing for adolescents because they are so dependent on their prepared environment and their social context. Because in order to become an adult, you need to practice that and you practice in a prepared environment. So you get the skills and the life skills um, and experience you need to go out in the unprepared environment because that is where you are going after you, you know, you, when you leave the third plane of development. So that is the question. So, so how can we do that when the, the environment that we offer them at home is so different from the environment that we provide them with when we provide them with the prepared environment? So I think that is something for us to have a conversation about and, and think about. And I'm sure my time must be up now. Yeah, it is. Thank you, yeah. Jenny. I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, as you spoke, the more you said, the more I was realizing how, what an impossible task I asked you to do. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, but I have a solution. And mm -hmm. I think the solution lies in our group here. I think so too. Yes, because when I look at uh, uh, all of your faces and the names and who you are, um, 
I think this is a very, very strong group of professionals. And uh, I think uh, let's just go ahead and share what we do and let's try to answer the question together. How can we translate the needs of an adolescent student into the situation today?